Well, if recent months are any indication, refugees, asylum seekers and Canada's immigration system could emerge as key themes in this year's federal election. But Canadian business leaders looking at labour shortages and Canada's ageing population are worried that harsh campaign rhetoric could provoke more tension over immigration. And to talk more about those concerns, I'm joined in studio by Goldie Hyder, President and CEO of the Business Council of Canada. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Let's begin with what your concern is about the overall debate over immigration right now in Canada. Well, as we're seeing globally, uh, the issue of, of trade, uh, immigration, uh, investment, these are all sources of angst for, for people, whether you're in the United Kingdom, whether you're in the United States or in some parts of Europe. Uh, and we're not immune from those political realities. And we have to be very careful to manage a, an, an issue that's very important to Canada. I mean, immigration, what it's meant to the growth of this country is central to who we are today and who we need to be as we go forward. So to me, it's um, recognizing that this is an emotional issue, but it's also an issue of importance for our economy. And we should have a calm, cool, considered discussion about it as opposed to a rhetorical one. And, and we'll get into that a bit deeper in a moment, but just let's go back uh, one step. You know. It's no secret that immigration, as you said, has been vitally important to Canada's economic growth um, and filling the labour market. Um, that's been the case for decades, for generations. What's the big challenge in the next few years that's really making you want to press this point home? Well, the first challenge, of course, is just pure demographics. You know, we have a, a declining birth rate. I think it's about 1.4, 1 1.5 1 uh, kids per family. You need at least 2.1 children per family to be able to just replace yourself in the workforce. Uh, the aging population has still not hit the, the peak yet. Over the next decade or so, you'll start seeing more and more Canadians retiring. Uh, who's taking their jobs? Uh, how are we going to grow an economy that has, not, that has not just opportunity for growth, but the, ne the need for growth? Because ec the economic growth is what pays for our social programs. And guess what? Those social programs are going to come under more and more pressure as we have an aging population and so forth. So they're all connected. So in trying to ensure that that's what the debate on immigration revolves around, have you gone directly to political parties, to leaders recently, asking yeah, them, yeah. Let's, let's turn down the temperature a bit? Well, we have, I and mean, it's not so much lecturing them on turning down the temperature, it's just concern that if we don't have a mature and a responsible discussion about this issue, it can very quickly go to a bad place, and a bad place by everyone. I mean, I can tell you there are many immigrants who have very strong points of view on immigration, but what's happening out there is immigration, asylum seeker, refugee, um, you know, economic migrants, family class, they're all being merged into one thing. And what we need to do is restore confidence, maintain the confidence I think that Canadians have in our immigration system as being rules-based. We all want the rules to be followed. We want to make sure that we are choosing our immigrants. We need to recognize that we have amongst the toughest immigration criteria coming into any country. We, we discriminate, if you will. We choose, we bias against age, uh, health, uh, education, employability, skills. There's so many things that we look at because we want immigration to be a, a pillar of, and a foundation upon which we can grow our economy. That's how we've done it. We need to be able to keep doing that. But what we shouldn't do is have a debate about, uh, you know, everybody's sneaking into the country and it's destroying our ability to choose. That's not true. That's just not true. So, you know, is there a person, is there a party to blame for that? Because certainly people say, you know, Andrew Scheer or Maxime Bernier uh, are really bringing this up and that they're pursuing policies uh, that are really singling out uh, the immigration system. And then you have the prime minister perhaps accused of fear mongering by uh, saying that his opponents are trying to make this, uh, you know, real emotional issue. So, uh, you know, who's basically, you know, who is who is making this happen? Yeah. Look, I'll leave the politics to the partisans. Uh, we're, we're a nonpartisan organization. What we're interested in is what's right for Canada. And what we see here as we go forward is, is that the, we have to acknowledge that people are experiencing a lot of change in their lives. There's high degrees of angst. There's frustrations. There's concerns about gridlock and quality of health care and access to quality education, et cetera. Those concerns that Canadians have need to be heard and they need to be listened to. But the solutions to them, there's, there's 
pure facts around what the right answers are and how to deal with those things. Immigration, economic growth are central to that. So what we're saying to the political parties is, you know, uh, resist the temptation to find ways in which to divide Canadians. Do, do what you need to do to unite them on something that's so central to our economy. So whether you're the government or a wannabe government, you have a duty and a responsibility to elevate the civic discourse around such a central issue as immigration. Do you worry that's a bit of an uphill battle, though? Because as you know, uh, you know, political parties want tend to win to go, seats. They want to win to, yeah. elections. <laughs> and uh, if they see it as a wedge issue where they can win support, um, you know, they're obviously going to go down that course. So, um, you know, how do you appeal beyond their obvious political self-interest in a campaign year? Well, you do what we're trying to do, which is to call anybody out that's going to try and do that and take us to a bad place, because there's no need to do that. Canadians are a very smart group of people. History shows that if you engage with Canadians uh, with, with, uh, with honest information, with facts, with you know, uh, an open dialogue where you're listening as much as you are speaking to them, Canadians have proven they have the wisdom to get to the right answer. I think you will see that, that, that support for immigration continues to be high in the country. I don't want that to erode. Our members don't want that to erode. And the reason is this. We have labor shortages in the country already. There are people, essentially our economy is operating at, 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 full, at full capacity in terms of unemployment. Uh, you know, we want to see that continue. And the way to do that is to ensure that those jobs are filled and, and sometimes that means bringing people in because we're not making babies fast enough and understand that every job that remains unfilled today is taxes not being paid taxes that should be going to your roads and your health care and your education so we have to connect the dots for people so how do you then I, I guess draw the line between you know what would be considered you know legitimate partisan debate over the immigration system over immigration levels how we handle refugees and asylum seekers, you've got that on the one side, and then you've got what you don't want to see, which is the more uh, inflammatory uh, debate. You know, how do you, uh, I guess, try and quarantine <laughs> those two sides of the issue? Well, I'll, I'll again, I'll leave it to them to self-police themselves. Our, our intention in raising this issue is, is first and foremost that it's an actual issue uh, in terms of what we're seeing in the market. The market has needs for labor and for talent. We want to ensure that any government has the capacity to help us address that labor shortage uh, as we go forward. Secondly, recognizing that the runway on the demographics is not a pretty one for Canada. You know, we don't want to become Japan, for example, that has, has had major issues around their demographics now. And guess what they've turned to immigration. They need to bring immigrants into Japan. Not so easy to do if you don't have a history of doing it. We have a history of doing it in Canada. We have a history of doing it well. And we need to have a future of doing it as well as, as possibly because it's necessary to preserve the quality of life that Canadians are enjoying. Okay, well, we'll see how the debate unfolds over the next few Indeed months. we will. <laughs> Goldie Hyder, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me.